So let's go ahead and review the sorts that we've seen in class. We have the select sort, which has an average complexity of big O of n squared. In select sort, you select the smallest thing in the list, and you move it to the front. Then you go back through the list, select the next smallest, and move it to the front. And then you go back through the list, select the next smallest, and move it to the front. It's not stable. You can make it stable with some additional coding, but it is an in-place sort. We have the insert sort, where you take the second element and you compare it to the thing before it. And if it's smaller than the thing before it, you swap it. And then you go to the third element, and you keep moving that forward until it gets to the place where the thing before it is smaller than it. Then you take the fourth element and move it forward. And then you take the fifth element and move it forward. You're taking that element and you're inserting it in the place where it should be. The insert sort is also big O of n squared, and so is not typically useful unless you have an already sorted list, in which case the insert sort has complexity of big O of n. We have the shell sort, which is a modification of the insert sort, and instead of just sorting each element with the adjacent element, you take a gap and you sort elements that are gap distance apart, and you sort elements that are gap distance apart, and you sort elements that are gap distance apart. An open problem in computer science is actually how that size of that gap affects the average complexity of the shell sort. Shell sort is also not stable, but it is an in-place sort. We have merge sort, where we divide things in half, we divide things in half, we divide things in half, and during that division, we don't do any work. It's when we start combining things back up together that we actually do the work. So the merge sort, because of the dividing in half, gives us big O of n log n complexity. The merge sort is stable, but it's not an in-place sort. We need another array to hold all of the elements in the list. We have the quick sort. The quick sort is where we take a pivot point and we move everything smaller than the pivot point to the left and everything larger than the pivot point to the right. We then go to the midpoint of the left and repeat everything smaller than the pivot point to the left, everything larger than the pivot point to the right. We then divide in half and do the same thing. We keep dividing in half all the way down. Because of that dividing in half, the quick sort is big O of n log n complexity. But the quick sort is not stable, but it is an in-place sort. Remember that with a quick sort, if you always choose either the largest thing or the smallest thing as your pivot, you're going to end up with big O of n squared complexity. For general sorting, it's unlikely that that's going to be the case unless you're unlucky. And so the quick sort, because it's in place, because it's a robust algorithm, is really the sorting algorithm of choice for most applications. We have the radix sort, and the radix sort is the mechanical sorter like you would use to sort mail. And so you start by sorting the integers, and then you sort by the tens, and then you sort by the hundreds, and then by the thousands, and so on. The radix sort is stable. It's not in place because you have to keep copying everything into the appropriate bucket and then copying it back out again. And the radix sort is really very slow because of all of that copying. And so it's not typically used. And then finally, we have the heap sort that we saw when we were talking about heaps. And in the heap sort, don't forget, we take our heap, a max heap or a min heap, and we just keep removing the number from the top of the heap. When we do that remove, we put the last element added to the heap, we put that back in the top, and that has to trickle down. During that trickle down, it gets compared to one half of the heap. And so the heap sort has big O of n log n complexity. It's not a stable sort, but it is an in-place sort. And in the example in the heap video, we saw how to do the heap sort using an array. 
So these are the different sorting algorithms that we've compared, that we've looked at. Make sure you understand the complexities of those, whether they're stable, whether they're in place, and anything else you need to worry about.